Main article. Battle of the TIE Fighter Construction Facility. A boy? Months of attacking Imperial targets, and Vader sends a boy to fight me? Ram Kota. To Starkiller departing the executor for Nar Shaddaa, Starkiller was informed about Ram Kota by proxy. Kota was a respected Jedi general during the Clone Wars, but while he was a military genius, he considered clone troopers unfit for battle, instead relying on his own militia. When Order 66 was issued, there were no clones in his squad to obey, and Kota was able to disappear. Starkiller quickly deduced that Kota's primary motivation for coming out of hiding and attacking the Empire was to attract attention, he wanted to be found. Upon arrival at Nar Shaddaa, Starkiller became increasingly troubled by Vader's order to leave no witnesses, as many of his eventual victims were loyal Imperial citizens whose only error was to cross his path, though Starkiller satisfied himself that this was yet another test from Vader and steeled himself. As the rogue shadow, guided by Juno Eclipse's deft hand, approached the TIE fighter construction facility that Kota and his men were currently attacking, Starkiller centered himself in the violence and conflict from within. As they approached one of the facility's hangars, Starkiller activated the Shadow's weapon systems and destroyed the hangar defenses. Leaping out of the ship right into the thick of the battle within the hangar, Starkiller killed off the combatants within with brutal efficiency, quickly clearing the hangar. The survivors retreated through the heavy blast door at the entrance with Starkiller in pursuit. Informed by Eclipse via comlink that the command center had been stormed by Kota's militia, Starkiller made that his destination. With tactical updates from Juno, Starkiller carved his way through the facility, all the while the warring forces became progressively more alarmed by his presence. The militia forces thought he was some kind of shadow trooper, while the stormtroopers merely thought him a Jedi. The militia forces became the primary focus of his rage due to their disloyalty to the Empire. However, he noted that many of the militia soldiers were equipped with explosives and had been setting them throughout the facility, motivating Starkiller to hurry before the entire facility was destroyed. Just then, the facility was crippled, and began falling out of the sky. Starkiller picked up the pace, now unceremoniously attacking his foes with telekinesis, either jamming their weapons or simply sweeping them aside. Reaching the entrance to the command center, Starkiller took a moment to center himself before entering. Within the command center, Starkiller encountered Ram Kota. Both were surprised by what they saw. Starkiller had been taught that Jedi were soft from a life of privilege and hadn't expected the hardened soldier that Kota was. Kota had been expecting Darth Vader to come personally, not to send, a boy, in his stead. Starkiller opened the contest with a bolt of force lightning which Kota deflected, albeit with difficulty. Starkiller followed up by charging, cutting at Kota's throat. The Jedi ducked and attacked the Darksider's legs, though Starkiller evaded by tucking in and overleaping. Kicking himself off the nearest wall, Starkiller came on again, chaining a telekinetic blast into his attack. Kota deflected the push, the rebounding energy forcing both combatants apart. Readjusting his tactics, Starkiller circled more cautiously, cutting apart chairs with his lightsaber and blasting their fragments at the Jedi, attempting to provoke an attack. Kota suddenly charged, his speed and determination forcing Starkiller to rely on tight form three defensive sequences to fend him off. Unable to penetrate this defense, Kota backed off and changed his style, fighting more slowly and deliberately, but chaining in sudden and devastatingly quick strikes, hoping to tire out Starkiller. However, this tactic backfired, and Kota's guard began to slip, allowing Starkiller to counter. Starkiller focused entirely on the duel, ignoring all other factors as he hammered at Kota's defenses. He came to the conclusion that while Kota was wily, strong, and possessed certain unique moves, his age and his rejection of the dark side of the Force left him inferior. Kota twice attempted to regain the offensive, but only managed to tire himself out, and the Jedi began taking hits. Seeing that he was being driven back, Kota broke off and complemented Starkiller's skills before telekinetically wrenching the entire command center free of the shipyard and sending it plummeting into Nar Shadda's atmosphere. As their battle renewed, Starkiller seized the initiative, telekinetically thrashing Kota with chunks of debris before physically assaulting him and throwing him to the ground. Before Kota could regain his feet, Starkiller was on him, initiating a blade lock. As their blades ground against one another, Kota experienced a false vision of Starkiller's future, expressing shock at seeing himself as part of it. Unconcerned, Starkiller drove Kota's own blade into his eyes, blinding him. 
As Kota stumbled backwards, Starkiller suddenly experienced his own vision, seeing his forgotten father in Kota's place, telling him to run. Pulling back, fearing that Kota was using a mind trick of some sort, he gave Kota the opening he needed to escape. Kota dropped his lightsaber and unleashed a telekinetic blast that shattered the viewports of the command center. The drastic pressure change sucked out Kota, who dropped spread eagled into the Nar Shaddaa atmosphere. Starkiller retrieved Kota's lightsaber before he himself jumped out through the shattered viewports, landing on top of the rogue shadow as it passed underneath. While satisfied that the gravely wounded and blinded Kota would no longer be a problem, Starkiller was disappointed by his failure to actually kill the Jedi. Darth Vader was pleased with Starkiller's performance, but felt that his apprentice remained unfocused and easily distracted, drawing Kota's lightsaber on him to illustrate his point.